I'm here with Rusty Rogers, head coach of the Cougar women's basketball team. Just one game played last week, a 71-65 loss to a Division II team, the University of Illinois Springfield. And Rusty, uh, for anyone that happened to see that game, uh, certainly the big story was um, the Cougars falling behind as much as 21 points late in the first half. And uh, during the last part of the game really made it exciting. The Cougars uh, got within as little as five points before they finally lost by six. Uh, certainly, you had to be proud of the way your team uh, just kept coming and uh, didn't give up, even though the, the odds were certainly against them uh, halfway through that game. Most definitely proud of the, the fight in the team. It's one of the things that we were concerned about coming into the year is, is how much effort, how much fight we had in us. And uh, that really was a, a, a great sign in that regard. Uh, the, the downside of the whole thing is to be down that much that late in the game. Uh, we just did not shoot the ball well. One of the, uh, one of the uh, big subjects of the early season has been the uh, Cougars' defensive pressure. And uh, it certainly showed itself on this night, uh, particularly when the, uh, the Cougars were making their way back into the game. Uh, they forced uh, nearly 30 turnovers, and uh, Courtney Lofink uh, leading the charge. She had uh, six steals in that game, and she's currently leading the conference in steals, by the way. Yeah, our defense, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep playing full court defense the entire game. And it, it'll wear on the opponent. Most opponents are going to, once they relax a little bit, that's where the turnovers start to mount up. So we want to have that continuous 40 minutes of pressure, whether that be uh, in our in our one two one one or 2 2 one And we, we just want to keep at it. And eventually, things happen with it, as long as we're playing good position defense. And then uh, you're, you're seeing some things uh, individually that, uh, that happen out of that press. And Courtney Loafing certainly showed her, her ability to read, def, to read offenses, read passes, get her hands on balls, um, six steals, that's going to be commonplace when, when she's out there on the floor and we're pressing like that. All right. Um, talking about the uh, offensive side of things, uh, one of the catalysts during that game was uh, Jayla Dijon. Uh, Jayla is a freshman, only a couple games into her collegiate career. But uh, definitely uh, during this game saw, uh, saw signs of the, uh, the potential that she uh, brings to the mix. Yeah, we like to move the ball on offense, uh, have, have a lot of cutting action. When things bog down, then you get an athlete like Jayla out there on the floor where you can create something off the dribble. It really takes a lot of pressure off our offense, and that's what happened in that game. We, we bogged down several times offensively and got late in the shot clock, and we allowed Jayla to put the ball on the floor and try to create, and she's tremendous, uh, tremendous athlete, probably the best athlete that we saw on the floor that night. Despite the fact that we were playing a D2 team, I thought she was the best athlete there on the floor. And when we allow her a little bit of flexibility, allow her to, to put the ball on the floor and create, um, that's what you're going to see with her. All right, now, the Cougars, with only uh, two games under their belt so far, now have a week in which uh, you have the first two conference games. Uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday, uh, the Cougars home to uh, Concordia, Wisconsin at 7 o'clock. And then on Saturday, uh, Lakeland College will be here. It's a 2 o'clock tip for that game. And um, Rusty, even though this is your first year at Concordia, Chicago, uh, doubtless you know the, uh, the rivalry. Uh, especially between the Cougars and the Falcons tomorrow night. Um, and certainly motivation uh, for the players is really not uh, an issue to worry about. Um, what, uh, what kind of things um, are you preparing the Cougars for as they take on these uh, conference opponents? Well, first off, uh, it, for me as a coach, it's really not much of a rivalry when you don't, when, don't have any success against them. So we don't have a history of success against them, so I don't consider it much of a rivalry. We're going to, we'd like to create a rival with, with them, and I think we're capable of doing that. So, you know, at, this is where the true season kicks in. Those two, first two games, non-conference games, were a good, a good test pattern for us, good barometer of where we can go. Now, now is where we get after it. 
And uh, what we want to try to do with both these teams this week is we want to impose our will against them, make them play our style, um, make them play faster than what they're uh, used to playing, and hopefully they won't be capable of playing that, that pace. So we'll see. But, uh, you know, we've got a lot, a lot of work to do in our program. Um, we're trying to create a new culture here of success, and it starts in the conference. We know this is a huge challenge for us. I'd say the biggest difference between us and Concordia, Wisconsin, is they know how to win. We're still trying to figure that out. So, uh, again, it's, it's a process. Uh, we fully expect to be able to compete with both these teams this week. We know that we're going to have to shoot the ball better than we did against uh, Illinois Springfield to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, the confidence factor, I think we are a confident team. We just we got to learn how to win, learn those little things that it takes to win ball games. You talk about confidence there, and I thought the game against uh, Illinois Springfield was interesting in that um, the Cougars did struggle with the uh, shooting for much of the night, uh, certainly the three-point shooting. And uh, a look at the stat sheet, uh, Illinois Springfield uh, won the battle on the boards. And yet with those couple factors against, uh, just the fact that the Cougars uh, came within uh, six points and maybe just needed a couple more minutes in the game, who knows. But uh, the fact that you came still close to, uh, to catching them, that has to be a huge, huge confidence booster. Yeah, you know, uh, as crazy as it sounds, we actually came out of that game with some momentum. With the, the way we battled back, we outplayed them the second half, both on the scoreboard and on the floor. You know, we missed a ton of free throws. We missed a lot of three-point shots. There's a lot of, I'm looking back at the game film, it's, it was a golden opportunity that we let get away from us. And, uh, but we, the way we battled back and we stayed within our system and just kept going at it, kept going at it, fighting until the very end, that created some momentum coming out of that game. And uh, we saw the biggest difference I saw when you looked out on the floor, you can tell they were a D2 team, just physically bigger and stronger than us. And consequently, we got pretty much beat up on the boards. So uh, when you create turnovers, that nullifies a little bit of that height advantage. We were able to create 30 turnovers. So those kinds of things are the, the way we're going to have to scrap and try to win games, stay in games. And that was a great test for us. It, and. Uh, Although we lost the game, we did come out of that game with some momentum. All right. Rusty, I'd like to thank you for your time this afternoon. And uh, we certainly look forward to uh, this week's action uh, in front of the home fans. Uh, best of luck to the Cougars, and uh, let's, go, uh, let's go knock off the Falcons and the Muskies. Let's do that. Thank you.